if we visit Orthodox countries, we find icons everywhere of St. Spiridon. I've seen St. Spiridon's icons in Moscow, Jerusalem, Thessaloniki, and of course Corfu. He's celebrated throughout the Orthodox world, and yet in the West, he's not so well known. And so I think it's important that we remember and celebrate this great saint, this important saint in the history of the church, Saint Spiridon. Saint Spiridon was born, first of all, in Cyprus, and he spent his early life as a shepherd. He had a very humble background. He wasn't a great scholar, he wasn't greatly educated, and the humility of his background stayed with him all his life. Whenever we see icons of Saint Spiridon, he is always depicted as having a big straw round hat a shepherd's hat, demonstrating that humility that always stayed with him in his past, his simplicity. And then when he grew up, he married, he had children, he wasn't a monk, but his wife died and as a widower he dedicated himself to caring for the poor strangers. He became famous in that part of Cyprus for his good deeds his kindness, to such an extent that he was made bishop, bishop of Trometheus. And as bishop and prior to being bishop, there were many miracles that abounded in his life, miracles of healing. People with terminal illnesses and diseases were healed by him. He performed many exorcisms. He was known to have a clairvoyance. People would come to him and he knew their secret thoughts, the secret condition of their heart. And he brought many people to repentance through this, drew them into confession. There are many miracles, but one that stays with me is that he heard of a man who had been wrongly convicted and was going to be executed. And so he set off to present the case and plead on behalf of this, uh, this poor man. And on the way, there was a great storm and a river was cutting across his path and he couldn't reach him. And remembering how in the Old Testament, rivers and seas had been parted, he commanded this river to allow him to pass in order that he may save this innocent man's life. And indeed, the river was stilled and parted and he passed and the whole party with him passed through the water and many rushed ahead to the city to tell people what had happened, this extraordinary miracle. And hearing of this, the governor there became afraid. And realising why St Spiridon was coming, he released the man even before St Spiridon arrived. There is another example. There was a great famine. And a man who was very poor went around begging for food. And at this time... There were merchants who stored up grain. Stored up grain because they knew they would make a great profit selling their grain at a high price. And a beggar went to one of these merchants begging for enough grain to feed his family. And the merchant laughed and turned him away. And he went to St. Spiridon and explained the situation. And St. Spiridon reassured him and said, Tomorrow your home will be filled with grain and that merchant will come to you in humility. Well, that night there was a, a great torrential downpour of rain and the grain silos flooded and burst their walls and the grain was washed out. The merchants lost everything. And the poor people came and they gathered grain for their families, including the beggar. And seeing this and realizing what had happened, the merchant repented and went that day to ask for forgiveness of the beggar, fulfilling what St. Spiridon had prophesied would happen. In all of this, he was known to have great meekness, great love, kindness. Although, whenever he met anyone who was very proud, he could be very strict. He would not permit pride to remain in people. And beyond his miracles, St. Spiridon is important for his zeal for orthodoxy. He is a great defender of the truth of orthodoxy. In 325, under Emperor Constantine, 
the first ecumenical council was called and the gathering there at Nicaea happened and Arius, the heretical priest, went teaching people that Christ was a creature, that he had been created like us, just as the Jehovah's Witnesses teach today. And Arius arrived at Nicaea with, with a number of great Greek philosophers intending to teach his heresy with profound words and complicated teachings to impress everyone. St. Spiridon stepped forward to refute this heresy and other bishops tried to prevent him. They said, no, no, you, you have no scholarly background. You're not a learned man. You'll be ridiculed. But eventually St. Spiridon was able to confront Arius. And as the Greek philosophers spoke, Arius said, let me speak. And he very simply and plainly presented the truth of orthodoxy. And he did it so in such a way that a number of the Greek philosophers were converted. And Arius was put to shame and the church defended the truth against this heresy. So Saint Spiridon was able to speak out with simplicity but with power. We are reminded of the words of 1 Corinthians 4 verse 20 that say the kingdom of God is not in words but in power. The kingdom of God is not in words but in power and we see this in the life of Saint Spiridon. A simple shepherd or his background was that of a shepherd and yet there was such power in his words the scholarly clever philosophers of the world were put to shame and converted. St. Spiridon died in 348 and such was the holiness of his life that even to this day his body remains incorrupt. The corruption of death has not touched his physical body. If you go to Corfu, there in Corfu city, a church dedicated to St. Spiridon stands and his body is there to be seen. And his skin retains the, the flexibility of, of a living man when they carried his body around the city in terms of plague and so on and on the feast of Saint Spiridon his, his body could be seen moving gently moving because it wasn't stiff and rigid in death his holiness was such that the corruption of death could not touch his body it's extraordinary I've been there myself and it takes two hours to to queue to get to Saint Spiridon and amongst the crowd queuing there, there were Greeks and various people shouting at each other and it was, uh, it was quite a scene. But eventually you get there and they have St. Spiridon in a glass case with a small opening at the bottom and you're permitted to kiss his feet. Kiss the feet of St. Spiridon, still dressed in slippers and every year his slippers wear out. A reminder that not physically but that spiritually he cares for the people there it is a sign they take that he walks the streets of Corfu city, caring for the poor and those in need even still. And each year they cut up his slippers and put fresh ones on. And I have a piece of that slipper. It is a great honor to, to possess that of Saint Spiridon. But these miracles are not there. His incorruption, his slippers are not there to convert, convert the world. They are there to encourage us, the faithful, the orthodox. God gives these small miracles, I say small, to help us in our faith, to encourage us, to give us joy. St. Spiridon's body has been moved a number of times. Um, it went from Trometheus, and then when the, the pagans moved in, it was taken to Constantinople, and then when the Turks invaded, it was moved then to Serbia, and then finally in 1460. It ended up in Corfu. And at one point, a Roman Catholic admiral of a fleet intended to build a Roman Catholic chapel into the, to the wall of the Church of St. Spiridon. Perhaps you might say he wanted to allow Roman Catholics too to show their veneration to the saint. But Saint Spiridon, this great defender of orthodoxy, did not permit this. And 
a fiery light was seen coming from the church of St. Spiridon and it came out and struck the gunpowder which exploded and killed many people including the Admiral. It was taken as a sign that this, this veneration of St. Spiridon, yes all are called to venerate the saints but he was making a clear sign that we must not mix orthodoxy with heterodoxy. So let us all remember Saint Spirit and let us ask for his prayers. Let us seek his intercession in our lives. He is one of the great and important saints in our church history and he continues to pray and protect us.